Hey everyone, how's it going? Today we're going to be talking a little bit about VTOL aircraft, specifically some propeller-powered ones. Aside from helicopters, as they're technically rotorcraft, VTOL propeller aircraft were effectively half of the early equation in the quest for a practical vertically launching vessel. And in my view anyway, they're some of the weirder looking designs, largely appearing after World War II with the increasing spread of jet engine technology, on one side you have your prop planes, that largely followed either the tail sitter concept, having the nose of the plane vertical, or the ducted fan concept. This led to bizarre designs like the Lockheed XFV and Convair XFY Pogo. While these designs wouldn't last very long, I mean landing them would be an absolute nightmare, they were actually at least better than the UFO-looking ducted fan designs like the VZ-9. On the other hand, in the jet realm, you did have some tail sitters like the X-13, but the larger direction was vectored thrust, where the thrust of the jet engine could be maneuvered or rerouted to exhaust ports under the plane, thus providing that vertical lift. Then, once airborne, the thrust could be gradually switched back over to the normal rear-facing positions for standard flight. Largely today, when you think of VTOL aircraft that aren't helicopters, you think of planes like the Harrier Jets, or maybe the F-35. But there is another type of vertical thrust that is used somewhat prominently today, and that is the tilt rotor exemplified by the V-22 Osprey. In the ones we see today, they usually utilize two engines and two propellers, with each engine and propeller sitting on the wingtips. Here they rest on a pivot that can move them from horizontal to vertical, providing both horizontal and vertical propulsion. The V-22 has had its fair share of problems over the years with crashes and failures, but the concept certainly has its merits, at the very least offering greater speed on average in normal flight over your standard helicopters. Now, the whole tilt rotor concept is one that seems pretty modern, as the concept only really took off with the success and production of the V-22 back in the late 80s, but it actually goes as far back as the early 1900s, with the Dufax triplane that never actually flew. And there was even the possibility that there could have been one in World War II. That little possibility is our subject for today. A German design that could have been the world's first VTOL fighter aircraft, all the way back in the early 1940s. This is the Fake Achilles FA-269, hopefully I pronounced that correctly. The story begins either in 1941 or 1943. If it was 1941, either it was in response to a call for a local defensive fighter, if an unsourced Wikipedia sentence is anything to go on, or it was in response to a call from the German Navy for an escort fighter that could take off on smaller combat or merchant vessels, if Air Review Magazine from Japan is more your speed. Personally, the latter sounds more reliable here. If it was 1943, it may have been in response for a call to effectively combine early helicopters and fighters to sort of have the best of both worlds, according to German aircraft of the Second World War. Regardless of the exact origin point when it came to designing such an aircraft, there were only two real options that Germany had. They had Flettner and Fake Achilles, and I'm going to start saying F.A. from now on. Flettner was a very small company that was founded by engineer Anton Flettner, and they provided Germany some of their earliest successful recon helicopters. Flettner also designed something called the Flettner Rotor, which is still used even today, and it's basically a giant rotating cylinder that uses the Magnus effect to generate propulsion, somehow. If you see a giant cylinder just sort of sticking out of a ship, 
it may actually be one of these Flettner rotors. FA, on the other hand, was a company that was started by Heinrich Facke of Facke Wolf and Gerd Achelis, a test pilot who had worked with Facke Wolf. Heinrich was ousted from Facke Wolf in 1936, which led to him starting a new company that was focused on helicopters. His new company would go on to produce a few dozen helicopters, roughly, in the FA-223, and over 200 rotor kites to be used in spotting enemy ships in the FA-330. I would presume, considering Heinrich Facke's experience in traditional aircraft design and helicopter design, that FA got the job as a result, and a design the FA-269 would be presented either in 1942 or 1943. Measuring 8.9 meters long, 10 meters wide, and 3.25 meters tall, the general body design of it was a bit thick looking. This was combined with a pretty standard tail, basic wings apart from the propeller system, and a cockpit canopy that was designed for greater vision to the side forward and below. The underside of the nose would be glass as well, similar to bombers. This feature likely wasn't due to them wanting it to be a ground attacker or bomber though, but rather because its propulsion system kind of forced them to. The FA-269 was apparently to be powered by a BMW 801 radial engine, but personally I think it's more likely that it was to be some kind of liquid-cooled inline engine, due to the apparent lack of air ducts for radial cooling. The engine would be buried in the fuselage behind the pilot, thus giving the fuselage its more bloated shape, and a series of drive shafts and gearboxes would connect the engine to each of the wing-mounted propellers. In the air, each propeller would be behind the wing in a pusher configuration. In the VTOL configuration, the propellers and drive shaft sections would swivel down about 80 to 85 degrees to provide that vertical lift, as the propellers and drive shafts would be pointing straight down by probably a couple feet. This necessitated very long landing gear to keep them from hitting the ground. This not only led to some very spindly, clamp design legs, tell me if you understand that reference, but also the under nose glass. That was needed so the pilot could properly see while he was on the ground. Even though the design was to be a fighter as well, the FA-269 would have been armed a bit differently than most German fighters, with two 30mm cannons placed somewhere, probably in the nose or wing roots. Very little else of the design specs are known or were ever even estimated, other than a required or estimated top speed of 373 miles an hour. FA would make a mock-up to be inspected, but not too long after that, likely sometime in late 1943 or 1944, the mock-up and also a lot of the documents on the design were destroyed in an Allied bombing run, and this effectively ended the FA-269 project. Even if it hadn't ended then and there, I do doubt very much it would have been anywhere close to a viable military aircraft. At best, it would have been a technology demonstrator, nothing more. With it being powered by just one engine in the fuselage, there inevitably would have been problems, in the series of gearboxes and drive shafts that had to extend through the wings, through the propeller arms, and into the propellers. The additional pivot point mid-wing added a clear point of stress and failure, and with 1940s technology, I highly doubt that it would have been militarily viable. Weirdly though, the FA-269 project would sort of be revived over a decade later, with a very similar experimental plane being built and actually taking to the air in December 1958. This was the Dornier DO-29, using their Dornier DO-27 as the basis, 
and the DO-27 would effectively be combined with the FA-269, but with some modifications to make it more viable. Instead of having a single engine sit mid-fuselage, the DO-29 would have two wing-mounted engines, and the engines would be significantly smaller and less powerful. Instead of a 2,200-pound radial engine with 1,500 horsepower, the DO-29 would use two Lycoming GO-480 engines, weighing about 500 pounds each, with just under 300 horsepower apiece. Very clearly, high speed was not the intent here, and neither was direct military use, as there would be no armament. So, just as a proof of concept, with a crew of just one, sat within a helicopter-esque cockpit and canopy, the DO-29 was actually pretty successful. While it wouldn't be tested to perform a fully vertical takeoff, and the maximum angle of the propellers was just 60 degrees, not 80 to 85 like at the FA-269, the testing showed that the DO-29 actually controlled quite well and had a stall speed of just 15 miles an hour. However, the maximum angle of the propellers was just 60 degrees, as past that, there were apparently control issues that made going further just not viable in its current state. Ultimately, there were two prototypes made for the project, and one of them was damaged in a crash in testing. Past the early 60s, the project would conclude as a successful proof of concept. Overall, the general concept of the FA-269 and DO-29 may not have advanced further than the DO-29 itself. There are at least shades of it in modern tilt-rotor aircraft like the V-22. Aircraft like the 269 and 29 are certainly on the family tree of tilt-rotor aircraft but they're like on their own parallel branch. It doesn't appear as though the V-22 took from either design, and instead took from projects like the Bell XV-3. The XV-3 used its propellers more as traditional helicopter blades, rather than as pusher props. In effect, the FA-269 and DO-29 are like a glimpse into a parallel world, the start of a branch that could have led to pusher prop tilt rotors. But in the face of probably more efficient and safer designs, in that the propellers wouldn't be spinning right next to the ground like they were a giant blender blade, that branch just sort of withered and died. Alright, and with that we're going to go ahead and end for today. So thank you all for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Now I'm calling this before I record, and I'm writing this down in the script. When I read the name Fake Akalis, I know that I'll screw it up several times. In fact, that's why I just switched over to saying F.A. That'll probably make me real frustrated, and there's exactly one person that'll get why I said frustrated like that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you learned something. So, see ya!